Okay, in this video I want to talk about implicit differentiation for a multivariable function. So a couple things to remember. Um, if you have forgotten how to do implicit differentiation in single variable calculus, the first thing I would do would be to practice some of those. I definitely have videos on those. Um, just type in implicit differentiation and I'm sure quite a few will come up. So if you don't remember how to do it, with single variable, it's certainly going to be hard when you have multivariable functions. Just to remind you, remember when single variable calculus, y is our um, dependent variable, x is our independent variable. This is considered explicit because our dependent variable y is all by itself, and then we have x is just on the other side of the equation. My uh, bottom left equation here, well now the x's and the y's, the dependent and the independent variable, um, are all jumbled together on the same side of the equation. We say that's an implicit equation. And the idea is when you take the derivative of the y parts, you do it like normal. Just recall you have to tack on this dy dx term. Going to be the same thing for multivariable calculus. Now z is our dependent variable. And x's and y's are our independent variables. So this is considered explicit because the dependent variable is all by himself and everybody else is having a party on the other side. The bottom right equation is considered implicit because now, again, z, which is our dependent variable, he's, uh, he's mingling with the x's and the y's on the same side of the equation, and that's considered implicit. So the only thing you have to remember, um, you know, we can't just talk about derivatives of multivariable functions. We either talk about, we talk about partial derivatives. So we're either going to take the partial with respect to x the, or the partial with respect to y. Depending on which one you do, you just tack on the respective, you know, the correct partial derivative. So let's do, uh, let's actually do this problem here. So I've got a little note here. So Here's our function x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals sine of yz. So the first one I'm going to do is I'll find the partial of z with respect to x. And when we're doing this, um, the variable you don't see, which is y, what we're going to do is we're going to treat y like a constant. Okay, so if I take the derivative of x squared, I'm simply going to get 2x. Well, the derivative of y squared, again, I'm treating y like a constant, so y squared is a constant, so the derivative of that is simply 0. Um, the z part is where we'll be a little careful, so the derivative of z squared would be 2z. But this is where we have to tack on the partial of z with respect to x, because that's what we're taking the derivative with respect to. Now on the right side, we'll have to use the chain rule, so the derivative of sine is cosine. We leave the inside part alone, but now we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside part, um, and again, this is where you want to be a little careful. Um, so remember, y is like a constant. So to me, this almost says like 5z, or think about it as being 10z. Well, the derivative of that would just be either 5 or 10, whatever the constant is. So the derivative of yz would be the constant, y. But since we're taking the derivative of the z part, again, we have to tack on this partial of z with respect to x term. So I think the main thing to kind of keep track when you're doing all these partial derivatives is really just, you know, which ones are you treating like constants and which ones are you not treating like constants. And <clears throat> at this part, it's simply a matter of solving for um, the partial of z with respect to x. So the way I would simply do that, everything that has a partial of z with respect to x to it, I would put it on the same side of the equation. So maybe I'll leave the stuff on the left side there. I've got my 2z partial of z with respect to x. This is all being multiplied, so this is all one big term. So I would simply subtract it over. Cosine of yz. I'm going to pull the y, I think, out front. And then we've got this partial of z with respect to x still left over. Well, the 2x that was on the left side, since it didn't have a, a partial of z with respect to x, I'm going to move it over simply to the right side. And now we're, we're almost there. Um, the whole reason of putting all the partial of z's with respect to x on the left side is that we could simply factor it out. So if I pull this out front, So I'd have the partial of z 
with respect to x out front, and I'll also factor it out of that second term. Okay, easy enough. And again, just to simply solve for the partial of z with respect to x, all we have to do now is just divide by um, all this stuff, and hey, we'll be there. So the partial of z with respect to x would simply be negative 2x divided by all this stuff. 2z minus y times cosine of yz. Okay, so kind of a tedious process. Um, Okay, in another video, I'm going to do the partial of z with respect to y real quick, and then I'll probably also talk about this, um, this theorem that I mentioned earlier, kind of a slightly different way to, to do it.